Hi and welcome to All Things Online. Today we will talk about the use of a great image to PDF app called Tiny Scanner. This app is available for Android and iOS devices and it comes in two versions, a plus version which costs $4.99 and a free version. The free version is the one that I will cover today. The free version does come with some ads and you can do some in-app purchases to remove these ads, but that is up to you. First, we will look at the iOS version. Technically, both the Android and iOS are very similar in the installation, but if you already know how to install an app on your device, you can skip ahead and we will demonstrate how to use the app itself. First, for iOS, let's navigate to the App Store. Here, you will see that you are greeted by the Features page. What we want is in the bottom right corner, which is the search icon. When hitting the search icon, you will see a search bar appear at the top. Tap onto the search bar and type in Tiny Scanner. Hit search and you will find a list of apps. Here, the one that we want is Scanner App Scan PDF Document. For me, it says open because I already have it downloaded. For you, it will most likely say install. When hitting install, it will ask you to verify your purchase. And upon doing so, it will go into installation. Once installed, let's go find this app. The app will then be called Tiny Scanner. It will be a little gray icon. Tap on Tiny Scanner and you will be greeted to all documents. This is where all your documents will be stored anytime that you create a PDF. At the bottom, you'll find three icons. A clock icon, which represents the last scanned item. The plus icon, which we will go over here in a bit and a folder icon, which will take you back to all your documents. Here we can change the view by changing it from a traditional just images being presented to a list. This will just show them up as a clean list top to bottom from most recent to oldest. But we'll go back to images to make it simpler. Now, we will create a folder, and we can call it whatever we want. So let's call it History Notes. Hit Done. Hit Done in the top right corner. And now you can see that we've created a folder called History Notes. So let's add something to that folder. You will hit the plus icon. And it will first probably ask you, can the app have access to your camera and your camera roll? You'll say yes to both. And upon doing so, you will be greeted with a couple different buttons. At the very top, there is a lightning bolt icon, which turns on and off the flash. A grid icon that turns on and off a little grid format for you to align your documents properly. The bottom left, a manual and auto focus. This basically, on manual, it allows you to determine when the photo is actually in focus and allows you to take the photo. And auto will auto detect when a document is in frame and take a photo of it. Next to it, you'll see multi page or single. Single basically allows you to take one document and treat it as one single page or one single PDF file. And multi-page, which allows multiple pages or multiple images to be one PDF. You can also do camera roll and upon clicking, it will go into your camera roll. So if you have an image of a document already, you can change that into a PDF. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off flash because we're in a pretty good lighting situation. We're going to turn on the grid just to help, and we're going to keep it manual and single page. I will line up my document roughly. I recommend that you have a little bit of extra space 
around the edges so that the app can detect the page itself. Hit the blue button. As you can see, it auto detects the page and will automatically put a border around it. Now you can adjust this by adjusting corners and a little magnifying glass will show up at the top. Or you can grab one of these bigger, wider little white dots and it will auto move that edge, the whole edge. Once you feel comfortable with it, and if you need to rotate it, the bottom left button will rotate the image for you. And if you need to do the whole page or just the page itself, that's up to you on the right button. In the top right, it basically just changes the size and layout. If you are comfortable with it, you don't really have to touch this. It takes basically uh, A4 as the whole frame. And once you're done, you can hit done. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, hard to read. So you can hit this little three circles button and you can do one of two things. You can first put it in color. As you can see, it creates this weird distortion and you can increase that or decrease that. Or you can go by default, it's on black and white. And you can crank up the darkness or you can lighten it up. That's up to you. I recommend just doing it as dark as possible, makes it easier to read. You can treat it as a single image, as the image itself, or you can treat it as a black and white image. I just go with the black and white and crank it all the way up. It looks like that traditional PDF scanned in look. You can crop the image, which just takes you back to that cropping area that you were at, which then you'll have to change any settings that you need to. Or you can trash it and start over. I'm pretty comfortable with it. So now I can go up to the very top where it says document in whatever page it is, or whatever day it is. You can click on that and change the document's name to whatever you want. So history, notes, 3 slash 21. Hit done. Sometimes they won't allow uh, characters like cash signs or forward slashes so you can always change that to a dot hit done and there you go you can hit save upon doing so it's going to give you a few different options you can email it to yourself you can save it to your photos and or put it in a dropbox since I have it set to PDF I can't save it in photos but I can save it in, uh, and send it in a fax form or do it in open in I can print it do mail me never actually heard that so I don't know what exactly that is you can put it in your files Google Drive box OneDrive or Evernote but you can also switch it to PDF uh, JPEG excuse me and save it in your photos in this case, I'm going to save it as a PDF because I'll have to turn it in later. And I'm going to do files. So I can save it on my phone if I want. Actually, I'm changed my mind. I am going to email this to myself. So now you give a couple different options. You can save it in a small form factor if, let's say, your email provider only allows a certain amount of spaces or you can save it in a normal format or you can have it at large it just basically means what quality is it going to show up as i recommend that if you're doing it over email do it small because some are very fickle about uh, how big you can actually do it now i'm going to send it to myself hit the little blue arrow and it's done it is sent to me and once I'm done, I can hop over to my files, all documents. As you can see, it didn't go into my folder. What you can do is at the bottom of the document, you'll see three little dots. You can hit that and tell it to move. And you can say history notes. Now that it's no longer in that main document area and is now in our folder. 
you can sort all your documents this way or you can just have them all in one area but I recommend putting it in folders to keep yourself organized. I thank you for watching and I hope that this tutorial helps you succeed in further 